Today on CityCast Philly, we're continuing our spring fling week from the meadows of FDR Park to the Belmont Plateau. Philly has some amazing green space. There's more than 10,000 acres of parkland and there's lots to do there. I'm chatting with someone who's hosting tours in historic mansions, night hikes, and salsa dancing lessons all around and in Philly parks. It's Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. John Sigmund, you're the public programs manager at the Fairmount Park Conservancy. Can you tell me, like, how many public parks are a part of the Fairmount Park system in the city? So Philadelphia has hundreds of parks, uh, over 300 uh, parks in the city. Uh, And there are smaller neighborhood parks, little squares and pocket parks. Uh, Of course, there are watershed parks and like big valley parks like Wissahickon and Pennypack, um, FDR Park in South Philly. Uh, and then, of course, the park that gave the entire system its name, Fairmount Park. So, yeah, that's, there's there's a ton of parkland. Uh, we are definitely a lucky city in terms of having such an incredible amount of parkland. For sure. And, you know, a great thing that I love about this uh, park system, and I really want to also learn more about, is that there are six historic homes and mansions all throughout the park system, and you all have some really interesting programming that happens at these homes. We've got Cedar Grove, Laurel Hill Mansion, Lemon Hill Mansion, where I know a lot of like cook family cookouts happen at, Mount Pleasant, Strawberry Mansion, and Woodford. And John, you're a tour guide and resident caretaker of Woodford Mansion, which is located on 33rd and Dolphin Streets. You know, I don't know a lot of Philadelphians who actually get to live in a historic home. What's it like there? It must be pretty cool. Oh, it's a totally amazing opportunity. Uh, It's been, I always say, it's a life-changing opportunity. I guess it's not for everyone. If you really value your privacy, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I would not recommend signing up. Um, You know, you really are a steward of the space. So what kinds of programs happen at the mansions? They're open for tours, which is great for anybody that's uh, interested in American history, colonial history, how people, these were, these were the country estates of the wealthy class that needed an escape from the city, from the heat of the city. So this was sort of their very elitist form of the Jersey shore, I guess you'd say, where they'd escape. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, you know, um, yeah, no, no snooky in these houses, but, uh, <laughs> um, so it's a great, these houses, are, you know, people visit the house to learn about what it was like living here in the colonial times. Also, they many of the houses have incredible collections of antiques and uh, and and objects, so people go to learn about uh, antiques and art. Uh, and then, of course, people that are interested in architecture. These are some great examples of architecture, especially from the Georgian period and the Federal period. So, architecture buffs love even, for example, Lemon Hill doesn't have an antique collection currently, but people love visiting Lemon Hill just to see the really spacious. Uh, oval rooms, which are very unique. There's very few uh, oval rooms left in the United States. One of them is in Washington, D.C., as you may know. So people tour them for a variety of reasons. Uh, There's all sorts of programs that happen. Uh, There are uh, thematic tours they do, sometimes like Women's History Month or Black History Month. They'll do specific tours. I will say one upcoming program I'm really excited about uh, as on June 24th, we are doing a tour, a walking tour in collaboration with We Walk and Girl Trek, uh, which are two organizations. We Walk is an organization that we manage uh, that is primarily, it's not exclusively, but it's primarily, primarily black women walking groups and hiking groups. Uh, and so we're organizing a walking tour of the historic houses and we're going to that specifically deals with the topic of abolition, the fight against slavery and enslavement, uh, because these houses 
dealt with both of those things. But some of the residents of the houses were Quakers who were uh, vehemently opposed to slavery and other owners of these houses actually owned slaves and, uh, and had a uh, differing views on slavery. So that's going to be a tour that we're going to do that I think will be really interesting. High fees and a low rate. That's what your big bank offers for your business savings. It's time to bring your business to Live Oak Bank. For a limited time, earn $150 when you open a new business savings account at Live Oak Bank. Convenient digital access, superior customer support, no maintenance fees, and one of the best interest rates in the country. Open a business savings account before March 31st to qualify. For full offer details and terms, go to liveoakbank.com slash Spotify. John, can you tell me what other types of programming happens throughout the Fairmount Park system through spring? Sure. Um, Fairmount Park Conservancy organizes a ton of great programming in the park, mainly in Fairmount Park and FDR Park, uh, two of the largest parks where we work. There are There's something for everybody. I mean, if you're interested in music, we're doing a jazz history series at the Hatfield House, which is at 33rd and Girard. Uh, it's that big old creepy looking house on the corner there <laughs> near the Aldi. <laughs> so we're doing a bunch of uh, uh, jazz performances there throughout the month of April out in the lawn with bands up on the porch. It's a great, great spot to bring that the family. That's totally free. Uh, we are doing yoga in the park is one of our favorite activities um, at Lemon Hill Mansion. We also have um, a boating program. So uh, we do kayaking on the Schuylkill River, on the lower Schuylkill below the falls. Uh, we also do kayaking down at FDR Park on the lakes. That's cool. Uh, we do guided hikes. So people with like park history or nature, focusing on park history or nature. For example, uh, we do a tree identification hike that's really popular. We've partnered with the Philadelphia Mycology Club to do a, a, a fungi hike where I do mushroom identification. People love that. We do bird hikes so bird and bird walks. So basically uh, go out with an expert birder uh, who uh, helps steer your eyes and, and, and your ears to all the amazing uh, birds around us. Yeah, there's so many things. Actually, got the, another um, one of our really interesting events uh, that was big for me as a caretaker because because I live in the park, uh, I'm not afraid of park after dark. Uh, I, you know, I always used to joke with our marketing team that I should write a really salacious rated R blog called Park After Dark. Um, <laughs> you know, some of the shenanigans, most of it's safe that happens after hours in Fairmount Park. Uh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> we don't need to elaborate. But, right. <laughs> um, but I then I said, hey, let's really lean into this. You know, there's strength in numbers and uh, let's get out there and do some night hikes. So we did. We've been doing full moon hikes. Uh, which are really okay. fun. And, uh, you know, people will use their flashlights on their phone or if they're really feeling brave, they'll turn the light out and just let their eyes adjust and walk on the trail lit by moonlight. That's really cool. Um, and then we have also do a stargazing party. Uh, we have Buddy Mueller, who's this great astronomer, brings out his giant telescope uh, and he points out, obviously lets you look at the moon up close, which is incredible. Uh, and then also points out some some planets that you can see from, believe it or not, from Lemon Hill Plateau. We're up on the Lemon Hill. Sometimes we go to Belmont Plateau. Uh, and it's amazing, right in the middle of an urban park, you can see all the way to, to Jupiter and Saturn. It's pretty incredible. John, I, I wanted to ask you, um, of all of the stuff that you get to do, what's your favorite, favorite, favorite spring activity at the park? Oh, you asked me to pick my favorite child. Okay, <laughs> this is a hard one. But I think I know it pretty immediately uh, because this is the event that saved me during the pandemic, restored my faith in humanity. Uh, and it's our salsa class and social dance we do at FDR Park that's called Bailar and FDR. And for those of you who speak Spanish, Bailar and FDR means dance. In FDR, very simple name, but um, we do, we have worked with a, a DJ named DJ Val Flores, who's amazing. He's, he, he runs a group called 
Philly outdoor salsa and bachata. And every second and fourth Friday, we're at the FDR Boathouse dancing away. It's incredible. It's really, it's a really amazing thing. We have a lesson that starts around 7.30 p.m., goes for about an hour or so. So great for people of all experiences. Newcomers are welcome. And the dance, the social dance, then goes on to all hours. I have to say it's one of my later park events, pushing uh, midnight, but uh, it's an incredible event. It's really an incredible event. It's uh, it's probably draws in one of the most diverse audiences I've ever seen. People from all walks of life, all ages, races, ethnicities, uh, you know, um, it's just it's just an amazing event. And it's especially in light of the pandemic, it's just such a beautiful thing to see strangers dancing with each other and laughing and smiling. And um, of course, it's amazing to see people get dressed up and see some of the incredible dance moves. But don't be intimidated. Uh, it's okay. It's, I was it's, about to say, I, I don't, I have one little basic little two step I could do. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's that's me too. I, that my excuse is I have to work the door, so I can't really. Otherwise, I would be uh, I would be out there and you know uh, showing the salsa, your moves. The salsa king that it ain't is salsa, but no, that's not me. That no, I also I have two left feet, but I do love watching it. It's amazing to watch, and uh, honestly, I would even say that it's fun to come to, even if you don't have the courage to dance. Just come and just sort of take in the scene we have food trucks and it's just it's a really fun social scene and uh yeah that's uh that's at the fdr boathouse overlooking the lake it's covered so we don't have to worry about weather um and that's every second and fourth friday john i definitely have to uh catch one of these salsa dancing classes but is there other ways that philadelphians can be involved with the work that you're all doing absolutely we depend on volunteers. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with our park system is, as we mentioned, 10,000 acres, and there is a very small crew of full-time land management people. So volunteers are the ones who really carry the weight of maintaining our and beautifying our park, especially helping with the all constant issue of trash cleanup, we all, all, all as Philly people know, unfortunately, that does continue to plague our park system. And thank God for volunteers who get out there with trash bags. Uh, so I want to encourage anybody that besides coming to programs, if you really want to get involved in the parks, uh, join our regular volunteer work days. Uh, and you can find info on our website, myphillypark.org. This spring, we're launching uh, our regular weekly work days. Uh, I believe sometimes it's even twice a week. It might even be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so if you get on our website, you can find more information about that. And that's just like the salsa dancing. That's another way where you're just meeting a group of strangers. And by the end, you'll have a group of best friends. I love that. John Sigmund, Public Programs Manager at the Fairmount Park Conservancy. Thank you so much for all these recommendations and for joining me on CityCast Philly. Glad to be here and uh, enjoy the spring in the parks. You can explore more of our city's park system by clicking the link in our show notes. And here's what else Philly's talking about. Boathouse Row, one of the most iconic landmarks in the city, is getting a much needed glow up. Fairmount Park Conservancy, the group you just heard from, is partnering with Philly Parks and Recs to replace and upgrade the existing light system. The houses will go dark for eight months. And according to the press release, this project will cost $2.1 million. And new data from the eviction lab at Princeton University found that eviction filings in the city have skyrocketed this year. Axios Philadelphia reports that Philly averaged 317 eviction filings per week over a four week period in February and March. That's up nearly 135 percent over last year. It's time for the tip of the day where we share a life hack for living in Philly. 
When the lights do come back later this year and you want a special lighting at Boathouse Row for a nonprofit or a corporation or institution, send a request to Parks and Recs for your calls. Head over to myphillypark.org for more info and we'll have a link in our show notes. If you have a tip of the day, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed the show about really cool events at our city's parks, please tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter too. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city and a chat with a local group organizing to get us skating. Bye. Philly has some amazing green. (laughs) There's the blooper.